Hi all. Are you hesitating about building a boat? Well, don't hesitate. I hesitated. I stopped hesitating. I built this vaca and this armor in four months. Boat building is as simple as you want. Welcome to the home of uh, Fleet Style Boat Building, Balkan Shipyards, 500 meters above sea level, 300 kilometers away from it. Okay, let's go over stuff. Poplar ply, 8 mil. This is my armor, 6.7 meter long water line. And it's the same water line like the Vaca. I'm trying to balance the two hulls out and make it go like a catamaran. I'm trying to turn this boat into a downwind Vaca. I hope I will succeed. I've got all kinds of ideas about how I'm going to do it. Dagger board case. Dagger goes light flu. Three bulkheads. Dividing this. Uh, going to have a bulkhead over here. A bulkhead over here on both sides of the dagger and another one over there. Okay, that's where the uckers get connected. Three uckers. One two and three and therefore four watertight compartments unsinkable there's my dagger it's, it's almost 190 long and 50 wide so it goes down into the sea 1.2 meters long which gives me 0 0.6 square meter of dagger which is 3 percent sail area Here's my junk leg. So here's my cell, the cell itself. And uh, so it's a five panel cambered junk. This is the this is the Le Shank. And uh, it's a shunting junk rig by Balkan Shipyards. First uh, proper shunting junk the way I see it because uh, you want your leg going forward, hanging a junk hanging a junk sail off a, off a mast in the mid, at midship that shines like this, like that, blinks the CE way aft. You don't want that. Therefore, this rig moves forward and really works well. These are all my uh, uh, torque calculations. This sail has got at 18 knots of wind at uh, 10 kilogram per square meter this sail will have 950 kilograms of torque on it so it will have to be reefed by then because my RM is only 600 and at first reef I come down to a perfect 590 so uh, perfect and then uh, so on and so forth so everything's been calculated by uh, uh, it's, it's torque calculations okay so you use leverage and you calculate things according to square meterage and leverage and distance from waterline and all that kind of stuff that's all been done over here as careful as possible and uh, I've done the same stuff to the vaca itself to find the lighting moment of the armor which is going to be about three meters away okay so here's the vaca and uh, 6.7 meter waterline 6.8 waterline on the Vaca which is roughly the same like the Ama 49 centimeters of clearance over here of the Aka that goes that way of sea level here sea level at 45 centimeters loft yeah the black line over there over here over here raked off bows I like rake I really like rake I don't like plumb bows Plum bow digs in and he keeps digging in and he digs in until he hits the bottom of the ocean where his leg toft lifts it. A lot of flare on his bows too. It's very hard to have flare on. Hope you guys can see, but like this is a flare bow, okay? Very hard to have flare on a, on a plum bow. Plum bows, they come out with very little flare. Sometimes no flail at all. Okay, that's our wing. The leap pod. Over there is waterline. 18 degrees touchdown. Okay. 
This has all been calculated. The water line rises 10 centimeters as boat heels over. She has the so here's the the calculations of the business. Okay, when I was all drawing it out and sketching it out, scale one to twenty. I use uh, rulers like these. They are beautiful stuff to work with. And I found I found my heel according to my span. Yeah, and I've come to eighteen degrees heel, and Ama is flying eighty-five centimeters above waterline at eighteen degrees heel when Leapod is touched down okay basically you got center of flotation which is that okay and all lines go around that center so you draw your lines yeah you start off with this line for example okay touch down through center of flotation going down and here I got it 10 centimeter rise over here over here it's exactly 10 centimeter rise from water line up to new water line on 18 degrees hill and then basically it's this dimension you have to move it down to here and you take your line out that way and it again goes to the center of buoyancy okay of the of the armor itself and then that that is that is 18 degrees water line to this line so that means at 18 degrees I'm touched down and I'm just flying 85 cm above uh, sea level. Now touchdown is not enough. The armor will fly further. It will probably go to a meter, maybe even more. But I'm saved at uh, 20, 21 degrees or something like that. I'm saved. I'm full on. This this uh, lead pod is made to take the blast from here. You, you can blast into this thing and it just you just fly away with it. I mean, there's no there's there, there's it doesn't matter if a wave smashes it. Okay. Uh, area of impact will be around here okay so there's bulkheads, bulkheads so there's quite a few bulkheads over here this this is because when I start sheeting the deck this is where the plywood meets so this is not a block this is not a bulkhead this is only where the, where the one sheet ends and where the new sheet starts I've I've put there's my deck sheets. They've been put on the boat. They've been cut. They've all they're all drawn out. All the ribs are drawn out on those sheets. I know exactly where they come. I know exactly where the screws are going to go. Everything is done. They're all planned. And those two small pieces at the bottom, they start here, and they close off this section. Haven't started working on these guys yet. Um, I've put in a, I don't know what you'd call them bow compression things. Bow compression things, I've got two of them. I blow holes, I'm trying to save weight. Pros are about saving weight. A light multi hull is a strong multi hull. A boat that can fall off a wave and quickly rise to another wave is a light boat, okay? Less weight is better. Except for going faster and being all this stuff, your boat is, it, 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 it changes easier. And, and, and it moves easier for the sea motion versus a keel boat that is heavy and it's got a heavy keel so when it falls it takes a long time to rise because it's got too much energy in the weight pulling it down further down okay so keep things light you know pros need to be light light bows is also good light, light bows is a very good thing to have on a pro so I'm trying to save weight I'm going big time on saving weight so there's a few deck ribs to come in here and then uh, we're going to close it up. I've blown holes in all the bulkheads over here. These are trusses, tension trusses, okay? They're designed on tension so when you're pulling them up actually they go into tension versus if I went the other way and I had, I had if I went this way it would be compression trusses, okay? Going this way with the diagonals. I've turned them this way so they're tension, plus or tension boats. So everything should be tension. Um, five mil ply everywhere over here. The bottom, the boat's going to have three stringers coming underneath 
to stiffen up the bottom slightly. It's pretty stiff now, but it's not stiff enough. Going to have a few stringers at the bottom, going to make me a very tough bottom. And uh, I, I like this deep pot, it's tough, it's very strong, nothing moves over here. Very, very strong. Okay, I've, I've put on deck ribs. Uh, we can start decking after I've painted the inside. These ribs are, are crazy style because nothing's holding them. They can slip down, but I stand on them. I stand on one of them and it's so strong. Filleted both sides, glassed one side only, saving weight. Every gram I can save, I save. Uh, screws all taken out, no screws in this hull. Only screws I have are in the lead pod itself. And uh, what they're doing is, there's three very small screws over here. Here's one, here's two, and here's three. And basically, they tie the truss together. They're making sure that truss never ever moves from there, okay? So all truss work has got little screws here and they're holding things together. So there's uh, 50 grams of screws in the, in, the, in the pod itself. The rest of the boat is uh, screwless. Okay. Um, over here we got uh, so my yard's going to be landing over here. So this piece has been, this section has been buffed up with 12 millimeter ply. A lot of weight's going to be coming down on this uh, gunnel. And uh, so I've strengthened it. These compartments are outdoors, okay? The deck starts from here and goes that way, and then goes around, and then it's all decked, okay? So this is outside. These are my, my sheet. I put my sheet into one of them, and then gear, binoculars, uh, compass, handheld compass, a radio, uh, whatever I want goes inside these two compartments. One of them takes only the sheet. There's going to be small holes blown at the bottom over there. At the bottom, if a wave comes in, it just slides out. I, I came up with this on make or break. There are those two holes, you can see them. Those are the same compartments. They're very effective. They're wonderful. I mean, like, you need place on deck to keep stuff. My deck plan is always open with a sea and the waves can come through. That's what James Warham always used to say. I respect the man and that's how I build boats. I don't like having stuff stopping the stuff to run through and therefore I have nowhere to keep my stuff. So I came up with these compartments and they're super effective. Very strong deck on this boat. Very, very strong. I'm very, very happy. I mean, I can stand on every single one of these ribs. I've come up with these dimensions by testing, okay? I've taken every piece of wood and I've put the weight that I think will come onto it. Nothing bends, nothing buckles, everything is TNT. Okay, let's go inside. Here's my steps. As light as can be, tiny pieces of ply. I'm very happy with them. 12 more. Okay, I've blown holes into these bulkheads, saving weight. That's a 12 mil bulkhead, but because it's got uh, spruce ribs, it's very, very, very strong. I don't need all that plywood over this. I just hit it all with the with the uh, saw hot with a hollow, whatever it's called. Whole saw, something like that they call. Okay, these my these my post boxes, my mailboxes. So here's my mailbox. So through here I can put charts, rolled up charts. I shove them in through the holes. These two, and then these guys are bigger, and they will have uh, a few clothes inside. Nothing, nothing much. Just just a little bit of light stuff inside. Stuff that I want to keep dry, because no wave can come in over here. No wave. Okay, here's my compartment hatches. I mean, this is a compartment and that's going to the section, the middle section is going to be a hatch that opens like this. It's going to be a hinged hatch and it just opens up. I can get, I can get into there, I can get into here. I'm really happy with this. Five more ply. And uh, this is basically the bed. This is where my legs go. On this wall there will be a piece of ply that falls down with hinges, it comes down and then my bunk 
starts from midship and goes all the way to there which is uh, 1.8 meters I think that's the boat on the inside guys I'm uh, I'm very happy it's, it's a big boat it's it's very comfortable to move around in I've got a uh, headroom over here is, I don't know about 115 or something or roughly because it was it's 120 and then if I take off the ribs over there which are about five six centimeters 115 let's say he has a bulkhead that has a truss inside it has a truss inside and and it is really tough it's made to take the leap on okay this bulkhead is strong and then here he has my, this is my main hatch my only hatch for coming into the vaca and then over there I'm going to have compartments in the front and in the back so two more hatches coming onto this vodka that's uh, that's basically the boat guys so this is a drawer not a Pacific Pro the difference is that this is a symmetrical hull okay I haven't got a flat wall to lee and a curved wall and a and a curved windward wall they're the same, they've got the same curvature and that makes this boat into a drawer and then I've got a long armor that has almost the same waterline like this Vaka so this is a drawer, again it's a pro uh, these boats were originated in Fiji they were the Bentleys of the Pacific and uh, this, I really like this boat, the Avaya 3025 she's a 3025 because she was designed to be 30 foot but the workshop allowed me to do a 25 and I'm happy with a 25 because less is more I believe that less is more people the bigger you go the more trouble you get into keep things keep things good enough big enough and you'll be happy enough so whoa okay I'm out um, yeah that's the boat so like I said ladder comes on here it's going to be a lifting ladder that lifts under the deck onto the side of the Akka and then comes down to here so it's going to be a ladder stock in this area somewhere and that's why I'm going to have to add a strengthener over here to connect the two sides together 8 mil poplar ply is the hull and uh, 5 mil is the lead pod and uh, that's the boat a lot of spruce on the bow, 12 mil bottom on the bottom, and uh, there you go. I'm I'm really happy. She's coming along, and the bad news of the day is that about a week ago I was in depression because it finally came to me that with two hands, there's no way this boat will be ready to sail this year. No way. Now winter comes, we'll. Well, July, but like finished now. It's like in a month and a half to two, it gets chilly over here, and uh, work slows down, and and it starts raining, and it just gets disgusting. So I'm going to try and finish over winter, maybe launch in May if the force is with me. And uh, yeah, guys, that's it. I mean, uh, just build a boat, people. I mean, if you want to build a boat, just build a boat. Build a shanter. We're going to keep shunting. We're going to... It's all about shunting. Shunting is the future. And uh, we're going to prove... Uh, we're going to prove the point. Guys, take care. All the best. The force is with you. Keep shunting, people. Havaya 3025. Proa. One force. 213. All the best.